Okay, so we have uh, basically uh, blocked Bentley through a little flooding exercise, and it was extraordinarily easy. I, usually dogs are trying to panic and run away. There was a little bit of a dust up when Tara was trying to attach the leash uh, to uh, his foot, but after that, he's been relaxed. He was breathing heavy at first, but you can see the respiration is slow. Um, he's, uh, I've been looking at his pupils. It's kind of hard to see in this lighting, but they don't appear to be dilated. And he looks very relaxed. I mean, he's leaning with his ear on the guardian's foot. Now, I should say that this has happened before where the dog has leaned on the guardian. And, and what, so this isn't by itself necessarily anything that is indicative of a big change uh, that we've made. But what we want to do is basically just have the dog practice being nearby so it's in a nice relaxed state of mind like this. So at first we like to do this a couple times a day and we want to wait until the dog is in this sort of a relaxed state before we, un, uh, uh, before we take our foot off the leash and let the dog go away. But we're going to let the dog go away on its own power. Um, once we've gotten to the point where the dog is relaxing faster and faster, we're going to start increasing the amount of time that the dog stays here before we take our foot off the leash. Now, when you find yourself taking your foot off the leash, he still hangs out for half an hour, then you can do it, you know, it's not as important, but some dogs, as soon as you take your foot off the leash, they're gone. Um, I don't think that's going to be the case with him. Now, once we get to the point where, if we get to the point where he's sniffing at you or licking your feet or your jeans or something like that, then we can take the next step a little bit sooner. But eventually what we want to do is transition to when he's nice and relaxed like this, you're going to come over, uh, the guardian that he's not fearful of is going to come over, pick him up, and we're going to place him on this guardian's lap. Now, when we do this, we're not going to pet him. We, the guardian can touch him, so he has a little bit of contact. And then the other thing I do is I try to position my arm so it's kind of in front of the dog's nose, my other arm. And we're not trying to pet him, just making it really accessible. Now, that would be a good way to maybe take one of those uh, treats, like I mentioned, and rub it on your wrist or whatever part is going to be right next to his nose. We want to cheat a little bit and get him sniffing. What you're looking for is his nostrils to start flaring and him showing interest in you. Uh, but again, we're not going to try to pet him. Now, we're going to combine this with taking him out for some, some walks, which we're going to go through in, in, here in a sec. But uh, the, we want to increase his, his time near you. And at first, when you're here, when both guardians are nearby, but because the dog is more comfortable when the guardian he's comfortable with is nearby, we're going to start out that way. But eventually, we're going to do this where you're going to do this, and then you're going to go out for a walk or go to the other side of the house and do some work. And so you're going to be alone with the dog. And, we're going to, and that is probably going to generate a little bit of a different response than what we have now. At first, he's going to try to get away. You're just going to keep firm on the leash so that he can't get away and wait for him to relax. Once he's relaxed, then you can text or call her, and then you can come back in the room when we get to the point where you're transitioning, putting him on the lap. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. How cute you are, buddy. Like, yeah, I know. 